Okay, so let's do a quick video on how to reassemble the clutch actuator because if your bike lurches forward every time you change gear or if you hold the pedal down and rev it up it pulls away then you know full well that some monkey in the past has assembled the clutch actuator incorrectly. The only other thing it could be is the plates are stuck together but that usually only happens after it's been sat in a, in a barn for like 50 years or something stupid. Okay, so this is a spare electric start engine. It's got the electric start on the top. But it's exactly the same between the two types. There's no difference between them. And this one is just my spare one for the for the electric start bike. So it's laying on its side so all the oil will drain to the other side because I've no wish to lose another half litre of oil dicking around uh, doing nothing in particular. But before you do this job, there's something you really must do and that is to get a spare gasket for this clutch cover because unless you can replace it, don't take it off. If it's an original Honda gasket and hasn't been disturbed or somebody's put it together without oiling or greasing it, it's going to tear. And if it tears, it's going to leak and you're going to be in a world of pain. So just get yourself a clutch gasket before you even start. So all you have to do, um, if it's still in the bike, then drain the oil. Uh, if, it, if You're going to have to lay it on its side to reassemble it correctly, but we'll come to that in a minute. But I can do this laid on the side on the bench so it's a lot easier. So once you drain the oil, start undoing all the 8mm casing screws around the outside. Yeah, one there, one broken off on this one somewhere. But um, next part of the video, I'll have taken those off and I'll have popped the cover off. And uh, I'll show you what's inside and what usually gets assembled incorrectly. 8mm. Okay, once you crack them all off, you can remove them out of the way. Da, 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 da. It's easier with an electric drill, but probably I was finding it today. So it'll do everything manually. Now most of, this, most of the screws are the same size apart from three, but uh, you can easily tell which are the long ones. The very longest one is this one, because it goes right through the casing into the far side. That's a long one. But this one will be the longest. It actually holds casings together as well as just the clutch cover. See how long that one is? Huge. Last long one. The front one. Two on the bottom. Well, there's actually three on the bottom. I've already taken one in. So you join the short ones. And join the short ones. Okay, so all the casing screws are out. Ah, she's stuck again. There's actually two tabs on the casing, one on each side, to help you get it off. So we'll borrow the little persuader, give it a gentle turn. There you go, pops. And if we take it off, there you go. And because I've done it previously, the gasket remains intact because I actually oil them before I fit them so they don't stick to one side or the other and tear and they don't leak when you do that either okay okay so when you take it off it on the bike the first thing that will happen is one you'll probably tear the gasket to bits anyway so that will definitely spend the next couple of hours scraping all the remnants off the gasket off here it must be absolutely clean yeah um, inside the outer casing will remain the outer piece it should not be able to turn and it's actually bolted through and if you notice the hole in the center that's where the oil comes through so from the oil pump which is in here it actually pressurizes oil into this bit it sends oil up the barrel here, but also through the outer casing here, 
along the inside doop, 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 and out through the centre. Once it comes out through the centre it goes through the middle here and you'll notice that little bit is spring loaded in there through the clutch and into the crankshaft so it lubricates it all but if you take it off on the bike the first thing that happens is all this will fall off and you'll have no idea how it's supposed to go back together so the first thing people usually do is they go oh okay uh, let's put a spring back on top of there somewhere shove that on there and then wonder why it doesn't work it won't the way it actually works and this is different on the Chinese one so be careful this is the actual operating arm that operates when you press the pedal so that's the arm do, do, do. now on the Hondas this is self-aligning yeah it can move in various planes on the pit bike ones it can't it's just fixed in there and also on the Honda, if you look, this central piece is spring loaded. And there's a good reason for that. It maintains the oil integrity as it feeds through, rather than just relying on it being a, an approximate fit. Okay, so you've taken the outer cover off and all the clutch actuating mechanisms fall off on the floor because it always does and you end up with loads of bits and pieces and you've no idea how they all go back together so that's usually with the time when people get it wrong put it all back together and then don't worry about it when it doesn't change gear properly okay so starting at the back you've got a piece that has a hole through it that fits directly in the clutch release bearing like so and leave the fork pointing towards the change arm, like so. You have the actuating arm that actually operates the clutch when you press the pedal, and it fits on the shaft and it's splined to fit it. And when you fit it, ba -ba -ba, it just drops on easily. Make sure that it points towards the centre of the clutch and then you know it's about in the right place. Most importantly the little hollow pin with the spring behind it this thingy here which controls the oil feed to the crank goes spring side down into the center and it should be a reasonably tight fit and you should be able to press it up and down and feel the spring loading on it miss that out, get it the wrong way round and you end up with no oil going towards your crank and a very short lived engine okay the next piece you actually want is the spring, the round spring, the anti-chatter spring that simply drops on the outside there and then when you look at your tray balls piece of kit that actually operates the clutch you notice that one of the sides has got a moon out of it, so it's obvious where that goes. But also one side has a flange and one side doesn't. So the flange side goes downwards and helps to locate the spring. And the cutout is there to clear the arm. And the number of times I've seen them where they've not paid attention to that and put one of these sides next to that, and the whole thing just gets mashed to pieces after that and there's no way it's going to change gear. Now the reason it's so difficult to do on the bike is the moment you assemble all this it all falls off. So unless you're leaning the bike about 30 degrees over onto its side then you'll never get it back together unless you wadge a whole load of grease around this thing. And believe me I've done it. If you do that because you feel you have to the next thing that happens is your clutch starts slipping because it gets loaded with the soap that's in the grease. But once that's all together nicely, yeah, and your bike's leaning over so it stays in place, all you have to do then is replace the outer cover back on, yeah. Bearing in mind there are dowels, you can see one of them here has stayed in the casing. The other one has probably stayed, yeah, it stayed in the outer casing. So it actually locates in the opposite corner. One goes here, 
one goes here and they help to locate the outer casing accurately before you do the, the screws up don't ever just bung it on and do the screws up because it's a good way to burst the casing make sure it's located properly first for those of you that are interested once you've got all that gubbins off and you're looking at it anyway you really should clean out the centrifuge under there but we won't cover that today if you worried about the filter screen that's that thing here you can just pull it out clean it put it back in again make sure you get it the right way around once there's one plain face that fits that way around and the rest have a little flange on them to seal so once you've done that all you really have to do is replace the outer casing which we'll do now it's replacing the outer casing da -dun -da -dun -da -da -dun -da -dun see beautiful unbroken gasket turning it over first locating the kickstarter shaft downing slowly Making sure the dowels go in the holes. Oh, missed. That's it. Located. So all we're going to do after this is put all the screws back in. We'll take the long ones first. The very longest one. Top front, three long ones in total. The rest are all the same size and they're all short. Chuck them in. Getting your eight millimeter. Wind them all in. But of course, you've noticed that the casing is firmly in place before you tighten them up. Otherwise, as I said, you can burst the casing if it's not located correctly. Don't rely on the screws to pull it in properly. It won't. You must locate it before you put the screws on tight. And I know sometimes they can be a right pain in the arse, especially if you're still working with the engine in the bike and it's leaning over and your mate's holding it saying, get the fuck on with it. But uh, really, <laughs> don't be tempted. More than a few casings have been ruined that way. Okay, last one. Now when you tighten these things up, these go directly into alloy and they're quite a fine thread, so don't go mad with them. There's no need. If the gasket's been well scraped clean and it's a fresh gasket, you don't need to do them up like a gorilla. All you need to do is just pinch them. Just nip them up. They won't fall out, honest to God. Undoing them is more of a problem. Any of you that's ever worked on a 6 volt that's got machine screws rather than proper bolts on it with the Japanese heads on them will know just how tight those things are unless you undo them with a, a proper impact driver you stand no chance. There it is, that's it, it's all back together. The only thing to do now is to readjust the clutch. Obviously there's instructions elsewhere for doing that. Undo the lock nut, wind in, wind out. Da -da 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 -da. That's it guys, job done. Easy.